Hello and welcome back to another reaction. I'm Andy Knox and tonight I'm watching Collateral. So I've had this movie on my list for so long and my executive producer patron on Patreon, John Swan, actually requested it. So I was like, this is perfect because I've been wanting to watch this movie for forever and someone actually like really wants to see me watch it. So this is great. So yeah, I don't know that much about this movie other than from like promos that I saw a while back where I think Jamie Foxx is like a cab driver and then Tom Cruise's character is like some sort of assassin. There's like crazy car chases and all kinds of stuff but I've heard that Jamie Foxx's performance is like really really good in this so I'm interested in seeing like how he brings his acting to the table because I've only seen him in a couple things like Ray which he was really amazing in and then like a couple of like old like 90s TV shows and um, like movies that were like comedies and stuff like that so I really want to see like more of his range and everything so yeah I'm excited to see what happens let me know in the comments below what your favorite part of this movie is and make sure to subscribe for more reactions also make sure to check out my patreon where you can actually watch me watch the full-length version of this movie so you can watch it with me so yeah make sure to check that out it's linked in the description box below and without further ado let's get into the movie <laughs> me after the pandemic <laughs> mm. I like this his cab is like his safe place away from the noise and all the other people. It's his spot for himself. I work with the man for Christ's sake and you're perfectly capable of taking care of your own shit. You know something? I like that the photo is like his happy place. He goes there whenever he like doesn't want to be around whoever or listen to any craziness. I feel like it's important for all of us to have our happy place. I'm gonna take the 105 east to the 110, that's fast. The 110 turns into a parking lot around USC. Surface rolls is what you want, that's what we'll do. <laughs> I'll see who's right. Are we taking bets? I am. <laughs> you know, if you just listened to me, we'd be all bogged down in traffic. You would have made yourself an extra five bucks. It's not that, it's not big deal. Not the big deal. <laughs> How many cabbies do you know get you into an argument to save you money? There were two of us, I had to kill the other one. I don't like competition. Oh, he's so sweet. I like him. He's like a gentleman as well. Limo company I'm putting together. I mean, a cool rule, like a club experience. When you get to the airport, you're not gonna wanna get out of my limo. So I do this part time to get my bins off leases, staff up, get the right client list, you know, things like that. She's gonna be a client for sure, obviously. <laughs> I like how chill this intro is. I'm actually really surprised by it actually, but it shows how nice and cool of a person he is. He's very chill. He has dreams and aspirations. His cab is like his safe place. He loves driving and talking to people. I like him. It's like a subtle intro, the way that they share his personality. I love standing in that courtroom. At the same time, I get this clenched up thing the night before the first days. I think I'm gonna lose. I think the case sucks. I'm not prepared enough. People are gonna find out that I don't know what I'm doing and my opening statement is gonna fall flat at the most important point and the jury's gonna laugh at me. Gosh, I really like this intro. It's so true to form too. Like, you know, you look at someone and you think you know exactly what they're doing. You know exactly who they are. She looks so, you know, on point all the time, but on the inside, she's just, you know, like everyone else, nervous. She's got imposter syndrome. She's afraid that people are gonna think she doesn't know what she's doing. So true to form. In case you ever want to investigate a Fortune 500 company or go on a date, argue cab routes. Yes, please date her. She's so cool. Both of you guys open up to each other. I like that. Start of a cute relationship. We'll see. I'm liking Tom Cruise's gray specs. Definitely a silver fox. Both show. I'm not sure if I'm liking this handheld camera like so close up to his face. I wonder what that's about. Oh, whoa, whoa. Hey, yeah, come on, man, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you, man, come on. I'll take it. Maybe you should have just let him go. <laughs> Would have dodged a bullet or two. We'll see. I read about this guy who gets on the MTA here, dies. Six hours he's riding the subway before anybody notices his corpse doing laps around LA. Nobody notices. Interesting dialogue, not what I expected in a movie like this. What are the things you're putting together? No, I don't want to talk about it. It's a little business plan. Hmm. You're one of these guys that do, instead of talk. Different dynamics. It's very open with the woman. Now with this character, he's just like, mm. I guess maybe the businessman aspect. Maybe it's getting late, he's tired. I'm in town in a real estate deal. Why don't you hang with me? 
Oh, the car's not for hire unless it gets red. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll make it 600. We got a deal. Here's 300 down. Is he gonna like pay for his limo service or something like that? Like later on if he gets shot up? He's gonna be like, hey, I put you through way too much. I'm just gonna fund your entire business venture now. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> what? <laughs> he had to hit the cab? <laughs> I guess now he doesn't have to worry about regulation so he'll get another car. <laughs> My man, you all right? Uh, oh, shit. Fuck. Oh, uh, I think he's dead. Oh my gosh, what happened? He, 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 he fell on the cab. I think he's dead. Good guess. Like, are, are you not worried? <laughs> you killed him? No, I shot him. Bullets in the fall killed him. Right. <laughs> okay, help me out. Pop the trunk. What? Pop the trunk. I don't know. Is he a, a good assassin? Because right now I kind of think he sucks at his job. It's supposed to make it look like an accident. <laughs> or like they did it to themselves. Purposefully or something. Like, write a note. Like, this is a little obvious, dog. Hey, why don't you just take the cab? I was just chill. They don't even know who's driving these things half the time anyway. You promise not to tell anybody, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? Get in the fucking car. <laughs> you, you get in the car. I think Tom Cruise's character needs to get a new career. <laughs> He's fucking up. Some of these shots are really odd. Like I see that they tried to make like a stylistic choice and it just, for me, it kind of looks really strange. Like starting off from the pool or looking at him through the stairwell. I wonder what that is. Wait, is that, is that Mark Ruffalo? Dude, like everybody's in this movie. Am I just seeing things or is that, right? <laughs> This is Detective Fanny Narcotics. Send two black and whites and a night detective. Oh. And contact SID. I got a crime scene. Undercover. That explains it. <laughs> Jeez. I'm not up for this. Okay, hey, hey, hey. You're stressed. Yes, I am. I understand that. You just keep breathing and stay calm. Poor guy. It's so scary. Like, I'd be an anxious mess. Probably have a couple panic attacks during the night. Jeez. He doesn't even have his freaking happy place anymore. Hey, is this blood up here on your windshield? Yeah, uh, I, I hit a dip. Ran right in front of the car and I couldn't avoid it. Why are you still carrying the passenger? This drop is on my way. Yeah, but your cab's unsafe to drive and we have to impound it. Oh, uh, dude! Like, you're in public. What is. Rampart Division Distance. Shots fired at 83rd and Hoover. Just hey, partner, we gotta roll. Roger, in route. Go straight to the garage. Holy crap! Lucky sons of bitches, because, oh man, they would have been done for. There's no way. They're way too public for a shootout right now. Plus, Tom Cruise's character is a little messy. I'm not completely convinced that he's right for the job. <laughs> you know, goddamn well your collision policy and general liability umbrella will cover the damages. I like was just trying to... Tell it to him. I tell him he's an asshole. You're an asshole. <laughs> Maybe Tom Cruise's character is good for him. He's too nice to people. He kind of gets roped into stuff, it seems like, because he's not like, you know, someone that sticks up for himself. This is going to be an interesting character development, I'm sure. Yeah. Mr. Clark, there's a notary here to see you. Uh, sure, send him up. I don't understand these stairwell shots. That's like so strange to me. What is the director trying to do there? Hey, I'm in the cab! Hey! Help him, help him, help him. I uh, hope it's not a gang or something trying to steal his cab. Hey, yeah, right there. I uh -oh. I'm in the cab, man. I'm stuck. Hey, man. Hey, look. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. Shit, I need to get out of here. Damn, you all tied up in Yeah, I'm trapped, so I'm gonna give me a fuck one. How's he gonna give you his wallet? How, how, what? Listen, don't you see that my hands are tied to the steering wheel? <laughs> what they're tied to? Californians. <laughs> uh oh. He's gonna find you. I bet there's a tracker in there or something. Yo, homie. <laughs> Jeez. Is that my briefcase? Yeah, it is. Why? You want it back? What else you got for me? Wow. But again, loud gunshots. Aren't you supposed to have a silencer? 
I mean, okay, yes, he's badass. He does have me there. Remember that Bay Area deal, Oakland? Cabby drove around all night, killed three people, then put the gun to his head? Yeah, the guy flipped out, so what? Cabby had no criminal record, no history of mental illness. Pops three people, then himself. Anyway, that detective always thought there was someone else in that cab. Oh, is that Jamie Foxx's character's fate too? Uh-oh. July 22nd, 1964. Who do you think walks to that door? Miles Davis. Dude was so focused, man. But plus, he was kind of a scary cat anyway. Well, you really ain't shit when you're playing next to Miles Davis. <laughs> I like how Jamie Foxx's character is, like, getting comfortable and, like, wants to continue on the conversation. He's no longer, like, you know, anxiety-written or anything. He's just like, all right, accepted my fate. We're here chilling, listening to jazz, talking to this cool cat. <laughs> Cry's not humor. Yeah, no, well, jazz ain't the draw that it used to be. Uh, what a great story. Uh, mm -hmm. I gotta tell the people in Kulakan and got the hand of that story. Uh, 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 uh <laughs> no, he's a target. I'll ask a question, Chaz's question. Yeah, you get it right. We roll. Where did Miles learn music? Juilliard School of Music, New York. Trick question, though. Gotta be a trick question. <laughs> Oh, not expecting that to be that fast. There's the silencer, though. Girl, that was brutal, though. <laughs> he had a whole conversation with the guy. Jeez, man. Just when you think it's just like, you know, you just trying to take a break from all the work. It's like, nah, this is work. I'm gonna mess with people before I kill them. Hey, flowers? It's a waste of money, won't mean a thing to her. People buy flowers, buy flowers. Excuse me. Keep the change. He's like slightly becoming a better influence for him because he's like showing him different ways to approach things. But he's also like a terrible person <laughs> who kills people at the same time. Four. Five, thanks. Oh, no way. Have a good night. Hey, mezzo, mezzo. You? Wow, so close. I hate those moments in movies where like they're next to each other, you see them walking by each other and they miss each other. They're gonna go head to head in the end, I'm sure though. I brought you flowers. What am I gonna do with flowers? You see what I mean? <laughs> I didn't buy you flowers, Mom. He did. Sorry, my son is rude. No harm done, ma'am. You paid for my flowers. They're beautiful. I love the different dynamics of conversations between characters. Jamie Foxx with the woman versus Jamie Foxx with this guy. His mom with him versus his mom with this guy. The way we treat different people definitely points to that. It's interesting. He drives famous people around. Limousine companies, that's what an achievement. Mm. Visit again? No, I'm just uh, in town tonight. Uh-oh, he got the briefcase. <laughs> Gotta get out of here. How do I get him out of here? Grab his briefcase. Gosh, he like desperately wanted to get away from his mom. <laughs> Poor guy. <gasps> oh, oh, crap. I don't know if that was the best idea. Whatever I tell him is never good enough anyway. It's always been that way. Got a father like that. Got drunk, beat me up, foster homes. Then what? I killed him. I was 12. <laughs> I'm <laughs> about to say, like, that's a rough, man. Rough start. These are interesting conversations, though, about people, the way they treat each other, things that we know about people generally because of the way they treat us. What is this, driving a cab temporarily? It's just all bullshit, huh? 12 years isn't temporary, Max. <laughs> Gotta get cash thinking. together with the right client list. It's not just simply get the car and put asses in the seats. Only thing about perfection is... If you strive to be perfect in everything, and you just keep stalling and stalling until it's perfect, you'll never have anything. You just gotta go with it and see how it works out. Otherwise, you might just keep yourself from experiencing something great because you're waiting for the perfect moment. You destroyed my workups. Number four is do what you think. Night's over, call the counter rain. You go in there, say you're me, score the backups. They'll be on flash drive or CD. Me? How come you don't? I don't meet people. Risk management and anonymity, I protect mine. You're not gonna screw that up. I mean, he has been around in the hospital, at the gas station. Aren't there cameras like everywhere? Like, come on. I know this is early 2000s, but. Cameras, finally. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, man. 
He's got to like stand up straight, take off the glasses, act like he's in charge. Hopefully you can see his transformation soon. <laughs> what? How did I not know like all these people are in this movie? Wow, I had no idea he was in this. No, you're here. Why? Because I need my money. <laughs> Pedro El Negro, Black Peter, Santa Claus gave him a list with all the names of all the bad children. And if the children were still misbehaving, Pedro would take them away and nobody would ever see them again. That's a terrifying thing to tell your children. <laughs> How do you think jolly old Santa Claus would feel if one day Pedro came into his office and said, I lost the list? How fucking furious do you think he would get? Tell me, Vincent. Tell me what you think. I think it's made up. <laughs> I think you should tell the guy behind me to put his gun away before I take it and beat his bitch ass to death with it. Here we go, he's doing it. <laughs> Come on, play the part. Yes, taking off the glasses. I picked up a tail. That's why I tossed the list. To protect, in part, your Hermes Fasanabla ass. <laughs> this is great. Little fever. Si algo sale mal, te lo quiebras antes de que lo agarren. Oh. He got out of there at least. He's getting it. He's walking faster. He's confident. All right. Believe in yourself and you can do anything. <laughs> Look at our witness, Peter Lim. This is the tech get him back to get him safe. African American yeah. medium build. The assault team, when they are in place, will do the takedown. Oh no, they think it's him. Unless he's finding out he's a cab driver. He's in there talking to the bad guy. There's something else going on. I thought there was, there isn't. It's their ball, it's their game. There's nothing in it for us. I mean, is it new for a freaking bad guy to use a hostage and pretend to be them? Like, especially the way that he was acting, like when he was introducing himself to the the security guards like clearly something's up it's very plausible for this guy to have just used the cab driver and made him <laughs> go in think outside of the box you know <laughs> jump into conclusions it's too quiet something's about to happen a gray wolf some sort of significance I'm really curious who directed this. I, I didn't see it. This is an interesting directing style that I'm not used to. Like these shots, just interesting choices. That's all I'm gonna say, interesting choices. Here we go. Let's see what's up. God, it would suck so badly to have to case a club because there's just a bunch of people around you, drunk and dancing. You can barely pay attention to anything. There's so many distractions. You were 15 feet ahead, three feet to the left. Wander, innocent bystanders, get the first rounds. Clear. His threats are so, like, he says it so casually that you would just miss it if you weren't paying attention. Oh, man. Does he have a silencer this time? Maybe getting in the gut? from afar somehow. There's no way he's gonna do it with all these people around, right? Maybe in the bathroom? Huh! Okay, that's a little public though, you know? Like, there, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, so the only one that saw this? <laughs> he's literally making a scene. <gasps> oh my God, dude, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> And how has nobody noticed this? Especially the cops. <gasps> oh. oh man, this is a shit show. Oh my God, these cops suck. <laughs> like, why don't you go up to him first and be like, freeze quietly. <gasps> oh. He's so so open about it though. What are you doing? Oh my gosh. They made a mess. A mess. I'm a detective Danny. I'm, right. I'm Max. I'm Max. I'm a goddamn cop. I know. I know. I'm getting you out of here. I'm LA PD. Come on. Oh man, Vincent. I don't know what you're doing, dog, but <laughs> just. Mm. Oh. 
Like, it's not that he's not good at his job. He just makes a mess of everything. And it's like, I know a lot of people like that. Who are just like, let's fly by the seat of our pants. And let's just like, screw it. Whatever. We don't need to make plans. We don't need to like, do everything to a T. But sometimes you're going to want to. Because like, then you get this. <laughs> it's just a shit show. <gasps> oh my god! Go! No! Oh, please tell me he was wearing a protector. Oh, no. He shot him right in the chest. Oh, I was not expecting that. Slow down. It's got to be perfect. It's got to be perfect. It's a goal. I could have done anything I wanted to. Red light. Uh-oh. He's losing it. It doesn't matter anyway. We're all insignificant out here in this big-ass nowhere. Here we go. <laughs> What do you think about this? So one thing I gotta thank you for, bro, because until now, I never looked at it that way. What do we got to lose anyway, right? He's not wearing a seatbelt. Oh! Damn! Well, if that doesn't draw attention. <laughs> also, Max needs to start his freaking business as soon as he gets the hell out of this, man. Because if this doesn't slap him straight or scare him straight, I don't know what will. <laughs> well, that was brilliant. Put your hands up. Face the cab. Yeah. Sit down on yeah. your knees. Put your hands behind your head. 1L20, I need a backup. <gasps> oh, no. Dude. <gasps> no, you're not. No, you're not. Don't do it. Do not. Somebody's going to get killed. If I don't go right now, I'm going to six and big. Call the cops. Jeez. All right. Here we go gonna go save her. I wonder what she, I guess she's a lawyer. She had to deal with some sort of case. Now she's implicated. Oh no. How is he just getting into these buildings and stuff without anyone noticing? Like he's just making such a show and like he's just getting away. Oh, I love that shot though. How you can see him panicking. Max. Annie, he knows you're up there. I can't hear you, hello? Annie, Annie, listen to me. Girl, hide, why is she still standing there? Go somewhere, get the fuck out. Hide at least, like jeez. Listen, there is a man in my building and he's... Always the moment that they get through. Ugh, that's rough. Ooh, that's terrifying. I love that. <laughs> Poor Max. Let her go. Why? What are you gonna do about it? He did it! But I think he only like grazed his cheek or something. What? Get it, Max! Hell yeah! What? Okay. Got away. I think. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Train. <laughs> Guys. Ugh. Hand to hand combat. Here we go. Are they gonna do it? <laughs> it's just like, I'm tired. It's been a long night. The guy gets on the MTA here in LA and dies. I think anybody will notice. Hmm. Wait, he actually got him! Wow! Go Max! That was nuts! 
I wonder how long it's gonna take for someone to actually report it. Interesting how that like came back full circle, that conversation. Michael Mann, interesting, okay. Just see more of his, uh, his work. This movie was really interesting. It was not what I expected at all. I didn't expect it to be so like existential with all of the conversations they had about people and how they treat each other and how like with LA, everyone's kind of just not as close and like they're more disjointed than like other cities and stuff like that and how you know they they don't really care about other people it's really just them going about their lives and stuff like that and if someone died on the subway no one would notice because they're just going about their day or their you know life or whatever and not paying attention to anyone else it's all about them and it was also interesting how like max was treating um the woman in his cab and how he was talking to her about his life and opening up to her and everything. Just, you know, being himself and everything. And then how he ended up treating Vincent, in the beginning at least, you know, not really opening up to him, kind of just saying like, hey, I just want to do my own thing, like yada yada. And yeah, like it was, there was a lot of action in this movie and I kind of expected more. I expected like it to be action like packed throughout the entire movie, not just like little sections and stuff, but I, I really like the intro of how slow the intro went and subtle ways that they told us about who Max was and who Vincent was and the contrast between the two characters and how Vincent was kind of getting Max to open up more even though like he was a terrible person, a terrible influence and stuff like that but he really started making him think about like what he was doing with his life and how sometimes you shouldn't just wait for everything to be perfect. Sometimes you just should go for it because you never know like where life will take you one day you could be doing something and then one day you could be dead and you could never have lived that life that you wanted to or older, you know, looking back on your life and you never like followed that one dream that you wanted to do or something like that, which is basically Max right now. And I do kind of wish in the end that they had shown us something about Max, like, you know, saying, I'm going to go for it. Like, this is what I'm going to do. Like, you know, I'm really going to do this now that like I've dealt with all of this stuff. But you do see his like a bit of his transformation. He becomes more confident. He isn't as scared. Um, in the end of the movie and everything. He's like really going for it and like helping Jada Pinkett Smith's character and really just taking a stand and doing the shootout with Vincent and like not shielding himself. Just like, you know what, screw it. Like if, you, if I shoot him, great. You know, like that's what I need to do. But if I die, like whatever, I will have fought for my life. You know, I will have stood up for myself and stuff like that. And there was way more to it than I expected. I kind of just thought it was just gonna be like crazy action movie, fun, you know, whatever. But like people said, Jamie Foxx's performance was really good in this movie. Very different from other things that I've seen him in. And it shows how good of a range he has. Like, I really believed that he was this, like, you know, shy character who just you know, didn't really stand up for himself, but like was very like humble and sweet and nice and everything like that. And who told the truth all the time, but you know, you see him like growing a little bit throughout this. And even though I didn't get that like moment of where like, you know, I saw him doing his thing in his limo business and everything. I know that after all of this stuff that he's dealt with and everything with Vincent, like he's gonna do it. Like, you know, they're gonna become like, you know, a couple and everything like that because of everything that they went through and yeah but <laughs> I really enjoyed this movie I had a lot of shockers like there are some things that, like I really didn't expect to happen and I also I liked how like carefree Vincent was like I did get kind of just like not annoyed but I was kind of just like dog like you're supposed to be good at this this is supposed to be your job and you're kind of just like fucking up but it was actually really hilarious because it's like that's so much to like, you know, who his character was. He didn't really care, you know, he didn't want to get caught or anything like that, but like at the end of the day, he just, you know, was killing people and he didn't really care like how much of a mess he made or whatever. He was doing his job and maybe he needed to be like specifically on time, but it didn't really matter whether or not he was like clean with it or anything like that. Like he was there to kill someone and that's what he went to do. So yeah, <laughs> so it's definitely an interesting movie. I'm so glad that I checked this off my list. Thank you so much, John Swan, for requesting this movie because I had a blast with it. And it's one of those movies where like, I didn't know what to expect. And I honestly like had those moments where I was so surprised by something that happened because I expected something else to happen. I love unpredictable movies. So yes, please keep them coming because this is what I love to watch. So yeah, thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.